Hello. Hi. So nice to see you both. So nice to see you. Actually, so nice to see a face that is not hers. At this point, I love you. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much. Um, can somebody who's listening in just give us a thumbs up that both of you are audible? Janki, I feel like your voice is breaking a little. Okay. Um, do you want us to go on? Uh, but we can't do headphones. Uh, yeah, this is good. This is good. This is good. So thank you so much for um, you know uh, being a part of uh, this series curated by Tanju Varlam. <laughs> um so um just to give uh, people who have logged in some introduction into what the series is about uh it's called in the company of the sari and we were keen for um, uh, uh, a a conversation series that was with women for whom the really the world of uh, the sari matters you know and for uh, whom the sari triggers so many things beyond just actually it being an outfit and so when vijay told me that she'd um, like to invite uh, both of you and invited me to be in conversation with the two of you i was utterly flattered because um, uh, i i look at both of you as um, two beautiful uh, you know women who wear the sari so beautifully and so differently and distinctly as well right and uh, so i'm going to actually uh, you know talk about that but for those who probably joined in and perhaps don't know the two of you i'm going to take a moment to just introduce the two of you from the short bio that you sent me this afternoon thank you so much and thank you to vijay lakshman for inviting me to be in conversation with uh, both of you all right um so i've known dhwani now when i uh, started my work as a consultant for the hindu and uh, i was literally uh, the first time i met her i was literally washed over by her very infectious energy and now as somebody who follows her instagram page uh um, and if social media is really an indication of one's personality i really think of dhwani as somebody who is extremely meticulous uh with great attention to detail um superb sense of aesthetics um fantastic sense of humor sometimes and uh, really a point of view on um, so many matters that concern society and the larger world um So um for those who don't know Dhwani Sabesh she's a food and a culture enthusiast who builds brands currently she works as a brand developer in the cloud kitchen space she loves all things food so do i except i don't know to cook as beautifully or plate as beautifully as she does um what started off as love in her party's kitchen is now a passion for food and stories she's also a cookbook collector she loves to read and cook and attempts to document them on her little blog which is by the way beautiful and dhwani you should talk about that uh, with uh, people who are listening in uh, dhwani is also a young india fellow from the ashoka university and also holds a masters degree in media and culture studies from soas university of london okay uh, janaki uh, well janaki is um, a public figure that everybody knows but i have had the golden opportunity of sharing space with her as part of avis's bliss catch a series in which i had the opportunity to uh, for her to listen to my story and for me to listen to hers and it was truly a fantastic opportunity and i remember laughing out loud with her and we've met on several occasions thereafter and um, she's somebody i really genuinely admire because uh, she's always she looks like she's so always in control of things so sorted uh, uh, and like and obviously dhwani inherits her sense of aesthetics her meticulous attention to detail i'm sure from janaki she's also a fantastic storyteller and i loved how she said stories to my son as well so uh, thank you so much janaki for taking time off to be with us uh, today i'm just going to quickly introduce you formally an actor storyteller author voice artist and a trainer janaki sabesh loves stories writing performing and actually living them an actor she, as an actor she is known for playing the quintessential mother to many in over 30 films across south indian languages she also held a corporate career for over 20 years in the arts and entertainment field she founded her um, storytelling initiative golpo tales unlimited around the same time that i founded all up in 2014 and golpo aims at spreading stories through telling and training for children and adults janaki conducts a course 
for the Chennai Business School titled Lead Yourself Through Storytelling. She also turned author recently with the Jungle Storytelling Festival, a picture book for children. Thank you so much uh, yet again. And uh, it's, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. So I'm firstly going to ask you um, about the saris that you're wearing. We can't really see them so well, but it would be great. Dwani, we'll start with you. Could you tell me what sari you're wearing? I stand, you could see it. I don't know. This is mom's sari. How old is oh. This is uh, this was gifted by Jayashree on my tenth wedding anniversary. So uh, that's so, almost so twenty, 20 years, years old. old. Oh um, wow! Yeah, and it's a tussar, and uh, I we were actually trying to coordinate our colors yesterday, and I was asking mom why I haven't worn this before. So this is officially <laughs> today. She's not getting it back. Uh, yeah, that was one of my questions about raiding each other's wardrobe, but we'll get to that. Janaki, can we see your sari as well? So this is uh, we have this is my tex oh. and this is cotton but with a silk border. So fondly at home we call patilla lot. Oh okay. <laughs> okay. This is at least uh, more than uh, around the same time, twenty years old. Uh, wow. And uh, the, I I have a fascination for checks, so this is one of my uh, checks connection. We try to be. color coordinated so we were speaking about green and um, and i tried to <laughs> <laughs> so that's lovely and dwani what drape is your sari what i uh, mean what uh, material what texture is it the tassel so and tassel. i was okay yeah okay lovely um dwani yesterday when we chatted about this conversation you told me also about how excited you are because you get to wear the sari i'm going to ask you what about wearing the sari is exciting and when did you really discover your love for it um so actually my excitement for sarees comes out of a place of uh, slight uh, morbidity and hurt if i may say so uh, i grew up being bullied a lot for the way i looked uh, and sort of whenever i wore conventional clothes like a jeans or a t-shirt or a salwar you know i always felt a uh, very judged the way people would look at me there were comments passed etc etc and you know growing up that was not particularly pleasant so um, to a phase of wearing just baggy clothes where i would look like a shapeless uh, sack uh, a purple potato if i may um and then uh, at that point then i discovered the saree and what i like about the saree is that it's very fluid um and it sort of listens to your body uh, yeah. you know, you you can make yourself look the way you want to and somehow in 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 sort of hiding under so many yards of fabric i actually found uh, i i managed to build a better relationship with uh, me and my body actually so that for me was a big thing so that's actually how my excitement started and now it's just so comfortable i mean i got so absolutely comfortable it listens to you it walks with you so sure yeah, that that's where the excitement and comfort comes from. yeah but but off late because we're working from home we don't get to wear too many sarees right That's actually yeah. what I miss most about going out because uh, I, before all of this, I used to make it a point to wear at least one sari a week. So right, but as so that's a bit of a bummer, yeah. which is why I was super yeah. excited. Like wear a sari. <laughs> Lovely, Janki. Um, you know, I've always noticed that you wear your sari in a particular way. And you know, when I think about the way the sari drapes on you. i think of it often as there's a certain lightness of being you know somehow i don't know whether it is the type of sari that you pick or the way you pleat your sari um i don't know what is it so could you talk to me a little bit about how the sari makes you feel um you know this this i'm curious to explore this idea of this quality of gentleness and quality of lightness the way the sari falls on you dwani would you agree i do Okay. I guess it comes from my amma who who is very gentle and uh, you know when one grows up seeing your amma wearing the sari the way she did you also realize it was not for she was wearing sari all the time i mean this she never even i think even wore a night except maybe when she had to be hospitalized so uh, you find that sari was something that that was her uh, you know uh, everyday statement you know that is what she was but 
having said that i think i like to um from of course wearing it for special occasions you know you have those first moments you know your school annual day and things like that you um, you know i had this uh, very um, amazing lecturer who is also the principal of lady shri ram in uh, delhi and delhi uh, meenakshi gopinath she used to wear the sari i mean the best of sarees and i always secretly admired her and i said if ever i wear a sari to be like her so she was my first you know after amma it was uh, ma'am and then one day i found uh, on our farewell day in college i found a similar sari color and she used to wear this biscuit color sari and i wore that and that day the biggest compliment i got was you're looking like ma'am you were oh. a man you know for me and there is this you know photo finish of both of us you know dancing and both of us wearing similar so i think it all comes from and i remember she never used to pin her sarees but for me i think this uh, pinning the saree is uh, something that i uh, you know it, it's a matter of comfort and uh, some kind of uh, you know that extra confidence that you get but yeah i think the sarees are uh, like friends to me and uh, you know some days how do i otherwise explain that one on a particular day i want to wear only that color and then you will mm. blouse is not uh, you know matching or the saree is not uh, gone for yeah. i think <laughs> you will still go ahead and wear only that sari we will yeah. not go so i think that is some kind of a, um, you know you like a like yeah, a like, like a relationship a, right relationship which makes me wear those uh, sarees and i like it i don't like those really pinned and very proper you know where, where people wear it like a uniform i don't like that i it has to be it has to be flowy but at the same time some days it's single pallu some days it's like you know when you when you're at work i don't feel because the single pallu you're so conscious you, it's always falling over and yeah. you know yeah your laptop it's it's not comfortable so that's the only reason right. i don't do it like this no, no, no. so she, we yeah this. so this is not entirely true i will come in because my mother cannot wear unstarched sarees and i am the exact opposite her sarees yeah like biscuit color her sarees feel like biscuits it's like she's wearing a khakra because that's how stiff her sarees when starts i don't even know how to drape that i have to do all of this i will wear single pallu even to work because so what it's just her so we're like falls apart when it comes to the sarees well it's not absolutely that's like going too far but but i really like starch sarees yeah and this one but you know um but you know janki um and dwani actually i've often wondered whether um, you know the way we wear our sari is um, often a reflection of our personalities right um i mean at least like um, uh, in a certain way if you see somebody wearing a sari you can you sort of get a sense of of um, how they're going to be aesthetically right this is like how um, you know i um, i often think about uh, my designer and i often think about how she has a fantastic sense of design right and i often think that people who dress up well also have a great sense of design right the way she pairs her clothes is also reflective so you can't be utterly shabby in the way you dress and i mean like shabby not just not have a sense of style and not be a great designer so i'm going to ask you about um, how different or similar are you in terms of personalities not just sari personalities but personalities itself uh okay you want to go dhani say- just give me dhani just give me one second just give me a second please i'll have to excuse myself for just a moment yeah hi namrata i know you're on live hi okay okay hi oh hi rachu i see Hey, hi, Rachuma. <laughs> no, no, no. I won't call her. Hi, uh, how are you? And uh, it's so nice to be chatting with. And look at Akila's blouse. Wow. Oh, I love your blouse. Thank you. I mean, th- I mean, I had to like because it was Panjavarnam. I thought I have to like show some respect for this beautiful brand. So, so she was sorry about that. You know, household working from home and all its problems. So first. we're very similar in a lot of ways we both are uh, very um, i think we both tend to react very emotionally we are very uh, all heart first kind of a thing 
uh, and things like that. But uh, we also have, so I've also got a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of traits that mom says are very much from dad, which is a sense of calm. I don't think I'm anywhere next to my dad's level of calmness, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, but we were largely similar with regular points of difference. I don't know if I can sort of frame it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I think the points of difference comes in the way she sees uh, uh, incidents and she sees uh, um, certain milestones in her life. And I right. have been a while, you know, it's, it's so beautiful that we can be friends, we can still yell at each other, scream at each other and have, but you know, this whole thing of, uh, oh my God, when are we going to, you know, go back to being normal again, that doesn't mm -hmm. exist any longer but it is something where I think both of us have invested you know both of us have tried and uh, realized that we are, we are different but in a sense we are uh, we are of course uh, similar especially in the way we react so this whole thing yeah. of don't react respond all that comes with you know with a lot of experiences in life and right. uh, I learn a lot from her the way she reacts because when she goes through her corporate uh, you know life and you know I sometimes I, I tend to wonder what would have been my response to a problem like this, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, as in which she shares it. It's not that, you know, we talk daily. Of course, I'm I'm so happy that she is with us during this. Yeah, now, yeah. I could have asked for more. All the yeah. food, you know. <laughs> Heart only. Yeah, I see that you had sushi last night. It was uh, the rice paper rose. Sandwich oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Arvind Ramamurthy, uh, Dhwani, is he your friend or Janki's or both? My best friend. He says nothing to match Sabesh's calmness. So. True. Yes. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he gets along with my uh, dad better than all of us do sometimes. <laughs> right. Wow. That's great. Um, Dhwani, who was your first sari inspiration? Um, and... Uh, how did you sort of, how does one grow into, you know, I've been wearing, let me just tell you, like I have been wearing a sari for like the longest time. And like you actually, um, um, when I was always tall, like I, I suddenly, sh I went for summer, ho summer holidays to Mysore. And then when I came back, I used to live in Maharashtra in a small little colony. And then when I came back, I was just like towering over the boys. And um, you know, so when I was in school, people would ask me if I was in college. When I was in college, people would ask me if I was married. When I was married, people are like, how many children? I'm like, none yet. <laughs> so so somehow like the sari, even while, while I was in class nine, because I was tall and big built, uh, you know, I naturally gravitated towards the sari and completely skipped that entire that power to love me nonsense you know <laughs> straight salwar kameez or sari right and but i feel like now um it, i've kind of grown into it and i've like you rightly said built a beautiful relationship with it right so i'm curious about how you have kind of who was your first sari inspiration and how does one actually grow into the skin of a sari so to speak this is going to sound funny but i think my first sari inspiration is me uh, purely because oh. I think two dad got me a uh, the red and yellow sari. Yes, yes. So there's a there's a wonderful photo of me like a midget me wearing this uh, red and yellow Calcutta cotton oh. sari. Uh, and that has always been my favorite photo of me. Uh, oh. So in a sense, I always wanted to sort of look like that bunny who just didn't care. And then of course, mom minus the starch and uh, <laughs> so her mother uh, my dishate was. So weird for a nation. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. She wears the best saris, and I love yes. how when she's singing, she's just there, and the saris are a part of her. It's like yeah, bass and that voice, and it's just there. And I think, I yeah, I think those are my main sari inspirations at this point. Right. Know. Growing into the skin, I think it, it's all about listening to your body uh, and to yourself. Um. So I remember the first few times I wore a sari by myself, I was always trying to pleat it. Because I was taught that, you know, that's a nicer way to wear it. And then yeah. one that no matter how much I pleat it, I was never going to be as happy as I am when it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's not because, you know, I don't like pleats, but it just, this feels more me. So I think for me, yeah. that I realized what actually feels like me. And then that's how I grew into it. I've never really thought about it uh, more than this. 
right uh, janaki i'm curious to hear uh, your response who was your sari inspiration and um, so uh, my grandmother that is maternal grandmother she had this uh, she uh, lived in trishur in kerala and she had this old rickety um, it was neither godrej it was a steel almira where mm. uh, the cotton sarees were elsewhere but the best of the kanchipurams were you know uh, there and i mm. used to in every vacation of mine i used to go there and pick up this one particular saree which is black uh, and maroon border and black which is one of those really old weaves uh, of kanchipuram and every time i used to go there tried wearing it and one fine day when uh, party said this is going to be yours i mean you can imagine <clears throat> still have it is it's the most treasured so i used to see her but the inspiration of course came from amma and uh, and then of course uh, the film actress uh, rekha and of course her, i was going to ask you about that <laughs> the way she wore her sari my god she she can wear this fully gold sari or she could wear and still you know that georgette uh, sari you know which is just very really, yeah whisked yeah. or white and just look so beautiful it was like you know i'm like uh, remember that film ghar and all that oh any you know she used to wear this bun and put the just that little stars. so i i was like you know when i you know when i start wearing sarees i must do the pallu like her you know and always for yeah. me it's like you know her pallu and then of course jayshree the way she wears a saree in like 2 minutes in 2 i minutes know for the concert or just going out and it's like hello i thought you know part of her yeah it's it was it's so beautiful that it's not a big uh, deal at all yeah actually that 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 brings me to my next question about how we've sort of um, for some strange reason you know um, so many times when i go for meetings or i go to work people be like how come in a sari going somewhere and i hate that it just irks me beyond belief advani i want to, want to talk to you about how you know uh, i know that even at the hindu and now you say even when you work at swiggy you kind of like wear the sari regularly to work without it uh, creating for it this connotation of it being occasion based or i'm going to a pune or a, or having to justify to somebody that i'm wearing it because you know um i mean could you could you respond to that um i think it was part of the uh, the phase i was going through when i was trying to i at, at one point i realized i felt best not just looking but i felt my best uh, when in a sari right uh, yeah. then it became something in between it became this slight challenge that i did which was uh, uh, you know i wanted to wear a sari for, for just a week and see if i can travel in the metro wearing a sari and just random things i would do to keep myself right. Uh, and then it just became a habit. So even both as a Hindu and now uh, at work, people got used to it. So first, first two, three times they asked me why sari. Now then they like, then it became a question. How come you have it? Why not? <laughs> now the other way around. So I'm actually really happy. And um, my favorite thing to do in Madras though uh, was, um, and before I moved to Bangalore, was to wear a sari and go out. Uh, you know, evenings when I went out for a drink or something, wearing a sari because they look at you like, who is this? really weird person and then you know they're like oh, okay wait she's just chilling and dancing and it's yeah like, gives me cheap thrills but yeah yeah it's like also like such a such a fantastic statement huh yeah um someone here has a question for you janki but i'm i've made a note of it and we will come to that later right um so um, my next question is really about um, you know because you both share this love for the sari Do you end up kind of raiding each other's wardrobe? I mean, is there like this is Dwani sari and this is Janaki sari? Does that happen, or is it like all and one and the same? If this room wasn't such a mess right now, Akila, I would take the camera to my cupboard and be like, "See, these are my sari, and there's mom sari." Uh, and I also borrow slash steal, depending on the sari, um, from my aunt, her younger sister, who lives in Delhi. Okay. So yeah. So there is a little cycle. So there are some sarees that I buy exclusively for myself, and then she will take. But there are some sarees of hers, my parties, my aunties, chitties, everybody, and I. I think I, I like I bookmark that saree. When you're tired of it, it comes to me. And <laughs> the saree exchange. So once it comes into my cupboard, 
you need my permission for you to wear it again but uh, i'm happy to share as long as you ask me and the what about you janaki the whole point is that you know you go uh, shopping and you buy a particular sari uh, for yourself and then for dhwani and then you say no no this will look very nice on dhwani and then one day she wears it it's either a diwali or whatever uh, and then one day she say ma why don't you wear this sari and i'm like no no this is yours she say chill ma just wear this and say let us and this is more she says there's nothing like that just wear and see and when i wore it after that i you yo this could have been mine no? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like can i is where the sari so even if she is in bangalore i'll tell her i'll text her you know there is this very, very unwritten thing that okay like ask you know so i ask <laughs> sometimes i tell but uh, i wear then you ask so and then uh, of course my mother in law thing has uh, some very uh, very very beautiful you know check sarees and also um, like she is so thrilled to see both of us in sari today so she is asking me golpo wa i mean and why <laughs> Who oh, are you doing golf for? So I said, yeah, yeah, I'll come and tell you. So she will say, please wear my sari, no. And anybody who oh. give her a sari, she say you wear it once and give it. First then. of all, and she says, on a cable or a girl, you know, they're so giving. So the, her saris are also, you know, sometimes uh, I wear it. So yeah. it's a nice pool of saris that we have created. Yeah. And and <laughs> we just need to have that many blouses and maybe you know just know. make. Adhikum contrast, Adhikum contrast, right? And Adhikum, she has taught me, you know, about uh, how you can create that swag with a crop top. All that, you know, I'm I, I'm slowly getting there. <laughs> yeah, Janki, do you remember that interesting drape we tried? Yes, yes. Oh my God, that swag that we created, and I was wondering, should I, shouldn't I? And Akila, you said, just go ahead, and you know, yeah, that, that moment, you know, that. moment of letting go of your inhibitions yes. yeah this, this camera ka, you know you've done so much and you know but there is that you know something yeah. been there with you for so many years so you said yeah. you know ultimately it's all about you feeling comfortable it's not much right. about to say but you feeling comfortable and it's just that moment of letting go and then that's how i remember i wore that beautiful yeah Did you for that? No, no, it's a beautiful red color pochum red. Right. Uh, beautiful sari. It's a nice boat neck blouse. Right. Um, so I'm uh, going to ask you about, um, you know, from a work perspective, right? Um, Janki, I want to ask you: when you do your golpo storytelling sessions, do you are you dressed always in a sari? No. So. Uh, because i i have to do a lot of monkeying around literally you know jumping here yeah. and there sometimes i feel you know uh, for my own good and for the people around me which is my uh, you know machas um i i feel more comfortable when i'm wearing and mostly i have to wear a mic and you know i always wear yeah. a jacket so that you know i can put the uh, the mic in you know the uh, um, yeah uh, battery there and uh, yeah. also but there was an occasion where you know i i tried i said children are so are so giving and they they are forever happy when you experiment also for one of the navratri uh, ones last year i did a sit down storytelling you know so i oh. got sari and i just sat down they never asked me they never said where is this auntie who goes uh, jumping up and down and all and it's created a very different ambiance you know and mm. it created, created that uh, divinity more you know, intimate yeah, about saraswati puja and we were talking about the story of ma kali so it oh. just more sense you know so it's again it's all in the mind so i have done of course adult storytelling i've done more of uh, right. but children sometimes because of the nature of the story one uh, i can do it in a sari also i mean you don't have to jump but sometimes because the story requires you to do i uh, rather wear my uh, sarwar kameez or you know, right that. right uh, dhwani i want to ask you this question and i have faced this so many times you know like colleagues friends who often think that women who wear a sari are typically they will label them as mommy and just because they wore a pair of jeans they think they are very modern and i so and i get so Like like I already said, uh, uh, irked by it. 
and um, really why are we also associating um, sari wearing with a certain um, why are we stereotyping it as conservative because you who you are is not i mean of course like who you are is what you wear i mean what you wear is who you are but why is it the sari sort of been um, labeled as inherently being in some sense conservative um, or those who wear it are labeled conservative uh it's also so largely it's also i think about how how you choose to style the sari because i remember when uh, on the days i wouldn't wear a kurta with the sari people would look at me and be like okay why you not wearing a kurta eda kasne the kind of things i get just because i chose not to wear a kurta uh was very strange but uh i think so when i was in class 11 i think uh, yeah. which was the we were asked to wear a sari in school um everybody was so apprehensive because there is this certain thing you know that sari is for older people and it's a complicated thing to do uh, and it just became like ayo sari kota you know you look like this you look like an auntie yeah because i yeah. think like auntie and then therefore by extension they were behaving like an auntie i mean i guess that for me seems to be the only reason why somebody would uh, i mean why we tend to bucket it uh, i remember when i started wearing um, so i like this particular kind of pottery ceramic pottery that i buy. by jewelry for and i wore it one day to uh, you know to to work before i moved to bangalore and everybody looked at me and saying oh wow i've never seen anybody wear a sari like this i wore a sari with a t-shirt and people were looking at me like i was an alien from outer space saying how can you wear a t-shirt but you wear what away with this no and and things like that so i think a lot of it is just stuff that we were assumed because maybe mm-hmm. from her generation to mine there was a small period of time where we were so caught up doing other things or we probably didn't give the sari the um, i would say we didn't give it the importance that it placed it or distance ourselves away from it thinking of it as being something very complicated oh. it, i think it comes from the complexity that we perceive but once you get used to it you realize it's actually not that complicated right so so do you think do you think that the sari gives you a certain like a spunk of confidence or um, are you inherently a, inherently a confident person like and the sari kind of adds to that I am now a confident person, and the sari adds to it. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, the sari helps me find my confidence. So uh, yeah, right. that adds that spunk. Right, That's super. Um, um, Janki, uh, like I'm going to ask you both about um, you know, like uh, there's something really fascinating about um, the saris that our you know grandmothers give us. You know. like you said your mother in law there's something uh, so charming and so endearing about an old sari like my mother actually had uh, during this covid she's sort of full of paranoia and she's like i want to give away everything i want to give away everything she's going through her own sort of existential angst so to speak and so she just gave away all of her saris and she told me yesterday when i went to eat uh, dinner that ellame literally she said ittu poyirthu i just gave it away and i said amma how could you I said your reception, wedding reception sari. How could you do that? And then today when I went back, she actually asked whoever she given the sari to to return it. So and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with it because it's literally torn and I can never wear it. But there's there's something about its smell. There's something about those colors. There's something about the border. There's something about. um you know where the sari i remember this one particular sari used to be in my grandmother's steel almira in mysore and when they would open the almira there's one particular aroma that would the smell smell is such a powerful association so what to talk i want you both to comment on what is it about old sarees that are packed with memories that we really want to hold on to and why is it important to hold on to that janki I have the very interesting box that I have inherited from my amma. It's called the camphor box, which was sorry, what box? Camphor box. Oh, camphor box. Okay. Trunk made out of camphor. It's actually a wooden trunk. Uh, oh, beautiful. There's in fact a story on the. It has a very unique kind of lock, and when amma was uh, alive, she used to pack appa's safari suits. Okay. Oh. <laughs> amma sari so amma's um, you know the typical vairavushi amma's kalyana poravari all those were kept in that would be in yeah. so that has 
uh, such a beautiful. I mean, exactly what you said. That aroma. You know, every oh, time. Uh, yeah, every time uh, you open that open uh, camphor box, there is this. And right now, now that uh, houses our saris. You know, our patti saris. And uh, I have kept some of her. Uh, uh, you know, her um, most precious. Uh, um, towels where these something called good morning towels that she used to get from singapore oh. so you know those ones and it was not that she used to keep anything inside that it was said that adila vandu poochi varade no insects will get in you know those silk worms and then nothing mm. right so you are absolutely right there is that that amma saree amma score podave which i still have Uh, because both my sister and I have, you know, I've taken the kora purve and the three meters she's converted into another sari. That kora oh. purve, I can, I can still smell okay. Amma's yaki powder in that. I know. So it, you're so true about that that one particular smell. Yeah, smell. Explain it. You just have to explain right. it. Yeah. That's the longest time I used to tell mummy about how. Something that she would do had a mummy smell, and she would completely refute it till this particular thing. And I think now she understands. Uh, yeah. But for yeah, me, it's, a, it's a part of who we are. I mean, especially with for with my relationship with my party. Uh, party okay. class was about um, what I think nineteen, nineteen or just. This is your maternal grandmother. Maternal. Um, so uh, for me, uh, it was sort of like a way. So there are two ways in which I think we keep her alive. One is the food. Uh, my party was the best cook on the planet, like hands down. And oh, then it was also, right. you know, with these sarees, a lot of memories we have stories because party used to bookmark her sarees for special occasions. And one of her favorite, uh, I mean, one of my most favorite sarees of hers uh, is this um, uh, Murshidabad silk. Yeah, right, Murshidabad yeah. silk, which From is uh, white, which has gray, uh, just gray drawings of Kali, Ma Kali, Ma Kali. Mm. Uh, wow. Wow. Five years old yeah. now, I think. And Tata had bought it for her when he had gone on a business trip. So it was one of her prized possessions. And now, oh. you know, there's just so much. Uh, I think it's material memory, right? We we sort of yeah, absolutely transported into another another space, and you know, such pleasant memories. I do that even now when, when I'm in Bangalore with her clothes. So I think, <laughs> yeah, sentimental. <laughs> But yeah, sentimental. So when when my my uh, Appa Zama lives with us right now, and this party when he goes to Bombay. To be with my Peri Pa for a bit, I like hold on to her sarees because I'm like I miss Amma, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just that little memory for me is very very powerful. Yeah, and I think like you rightly said, I wonder whether um, you have to have that streak of that being emotional to actually feel these things, right? Especially like if you can't feel, then you. that you can't connect with like with material like that right so um is there one particular you know a weave like i for instance like for the longest time wanted to own a banarasi and then i saved up and saved up and saved up and finally last year i bought a beautiful red banarasi that i never thought i would wear but every time i wear it someone definitely gives me a compliment so like that do you have both have any particular weave that you want to kind of own I mean, these um, there is one particular pink. I don't know. I, I think I've even spoken to Biji about it. There is this uh, uh, pink and gold checks, but the gold is very subtle. And I have shown her pictures that a friend's friend wore it. You know, and I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. After that, I I remember showing it to Biji, showing it to some other shops, and seeing in the Madhi. And that lady had paired it with a green blouse. So for mm. me, there. Yeah, I so so it is. Must be some kind of a pattern. So that pink check, something that is uh, that is on my list. On your wish list, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Viji, I hope you're listening, and I hope you're going to be able to recreate this for Janaki. What about you, um, Dwani? What is your favorite weave? Uh, right now, so I think I go through phases. Uh, my two major phases right now are Pochampalli ikat and uh, mal, mal of any kind. Yeah. Uh, and I have these. Um, I have these massive uh, wish list of colors. I love solids because okay. I can what I want with the blouse. Yeah, I see you wear a lot of that. So uh, yeah, so every every two months I decide I have okay this color. So I recently bought a plain black. Uh, it was not one; it was Mangalgiri cotton, like just solid black. Uh, because wow. I had I already had the blouse. I wanted a sari to match. Uh, of course. 
so yeah it changes but it's i'm a very cotton linen uh i mean that's my happy space cotton linen khadi all of that silk right <laughs> Right. So I, for example, I I have never ever worn a plain sari. So the money I've seen you wear a lot of like whites, right? Whites as well. Yes. I do. You have like Janki. Do you have like color blocks like that? Like a particular type of like I I've never worn a Georgette sari, and I don't think I ever will. Yeah. So you too. Okay. Uh, is there any like particular color that you're averse to? I'd like both of you to respond to that. But I think Jayshree gifted me a Georgette, uh, or some. It, it was one of those. I, I, or she made me buy that. But I wore it just once, and after that, I've never ever uh, worn it. And I think Dhwani wears it. So the it's one. yeah, it's the blue one. And and um, these uh, linen, you know, these uh, certain things that I have made. I, it's a mental block that it won't suit me. The brown, and I always feel I should wear colors, you know, which will. you know maybe reflect that color and all nothing like that i think i i i go slow in experimenting this one goes uh, typically opposite so yeah. i just softly and uh, saying that yeah. you know maybe it should, and you know it's like uh, then you know what happens you never wear those sarees and people will say are you you never wear those sarees so then i say cha see i should have just gone back to my pink listen yeah the, No, but uh, with cotton, I know because you can really experiment. Yeah. So I also like. Uh, I started liking. I was. I went through a phase of checks. I went through a phase of pudi checks. Then polycots. You know, with those big one uh, checks and small checks. Then I said, okay, enough of checks. Let's let's you know start looking at something and solids. It's like I don't like too much of design on my uh, sarees. It has to be yes. very clear. And now we we can play around with the blouse, as she said. Yeah, absolutely. The blouse is the queen now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, for me, uh, I, I have uh, phases. So I have very clear phases in terms of color, in terms of material. So when I was in the peak of my mull phase, I knew I wanted this particular black printed mull, and it had to be a certain way. Uh, so I and, and I kind of went on a hunt for that. I'm currently on a similar hunt for a white self-designed mull. So I, I kind of. Wow. Very specific uh, sari hunts, and um, yeah, but uh, I think uh, it, it it honestly depends on what I'm feeling like. So lovely, yeah. okay. Going Super. up and down. That's where I'm right. At. Okay, um, just um, uh, Dwani, I do know that you also have a passion for cooking, right? Could you just talk to us about um, you know? Um, Why do you cook? Do you cook because you love food, or do you cook because it's it makes you feel calm, or do you cook because you're experimental by nature? Like, what is it about cooking and plating that you you know? I think right now it's all of the above. Uh, I think pre-lockdown, I think food, thanks to party, I think food has just been a very very big. Uh, uh, you know, I used to decide which house I would go to after school because party used to stay right opposite, based on the menu in that house. So I've always oh. been some. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been a very demanding, bratty child in that sense. Um, but, uh, I, I, I actually don't remember when I started cooking. I've been asking her. We don't necessarily remember, but uh, it, it just. I think over a period of time, it's something that uh, is very therapeutic for me. So if I have an excess, whether it's positive, negative, I just need to cook. It's if I don't, right. cook, I kind of feel like I'm missing out on something. That that is my. Uh, so it's it, it's kind of a release for me. Uh, and right. Lockdown began. Cooking's been that one thing that's keeping me a little sane because uh, you're doing something yeah. new. It's kind of important to ourselves that we will not repeat a single dish this lockdown, and we're trying. Yeah, oh we're yeah. We're a little flexible on the rules. Like you know, like plain jeera, you put roasted jeera, it comes as a new dish. We're being a little flexible right now. Uh, but not yeah. inviting you to my house, Bunny. <laughs> it's okay. I'll invite no brownies like now. <laughs> but yeah, so that's. Been there, and um, I, for the first time, I started cooking a lot of my party's recipes because I was always one of those very I will cook fancy flavors and stuff I see on Master Chef kind of person. But um, the lockdown and what I've been cooking through the lockdown has helped me, uh, you know, embrace my identity a lot more uh, because uh, my heritage of what my party. Yeah, was. party was also part of the Malaysian Tamil diaspora growing up, so Ooh. she had handwritten recipes of. Stuff that she like of Malaysian dishes that we make sometimes at home and 
you know wonderful things like that then we've got the kerala influence the calcutta influence bombay delhi then madras and plus you know whatever my party saw on tv kind of an influence so yeah so all of that just sort of yeah it's like a melting like, pot of yeah it's in the multicultural culturality that's a word uh, yeah to also the, the chefs who i follow today the kind of stuff i see in master chef australia or uh, you know the books that i collect and i read like that so Yeah. Right. Um, Lovely. That's actually, been there. in fact, my friend Shreya is uh, on the live, and she put together a cookbook for me once uh, for my last birthday. Wow. Everybody, uh, I think, share their favorite recipe and memory. Recipe. And that's one of my favorite books because it's just so that it's like a material memory thing, right? It's just absolutely. Hold on to sorry. Mm. Uh, with and it's just so beautiful. So there, cooking is that. Yeah. yeah, and I think those are the kind of gifts we must be giving each other. Apart from, of course, beautiful saris, if we can afford like them. Saris and cookbooks always welcome. Saris and cookbooks always welcome. Janaki, I'm going to ask you about, um, you know, what is your experience uh, during this lockdown of sharing stories online? Bin, you know, it's a different medium. Um, it's it's very very new for children. Perhaps a little strange for you as well. How has this whole experience of um, of sharing stories online been like? For the longest time, I I was uh, never you know uh, um, I think I never wanted to tell stories to uh, a camera, though I mean okay. I did it for multiple yeah. other yeah you know but I said storytelling is that instant gratification that you get from yeah who are so giving and you know um, or there are so many stories within the story yeah. that's happening yeah. there but the moment they announce I think that the schools will be closed in March. I still remember that one call I made to a friend of mine, Avanti, and uh, mm. he said, "Okay, let's try something." I said, "Go live." I mean, I, I said, I, "It's I don't know how it will be." So I just performed. I just performed in this very room, and the the response was so overwhelming that I said, "Hello, it's it's nothing different. I just have to I just have to imagine that my bachas are right in front Sitting. of me." Sitting. All, and that started, and I. I think uh, I'm very, very active, and I'm very happy that uh, there's been so much encouragement, so much love, so much support, saying that why didn't you do this story? And we've, I've collaborated with publishers, and mm -hmm. you know they are saying why don't you do this story? And then we had you know online festivals. So every day at 5 p.m. when we went live, it was like so many. And today there have been so many children who you know parents who send me could. The videos of their kids, you know, Children. the songs that I have sung, and uh, uh -huh. what people want. I mean, the, yeah. that's what is. Uh, they might forget those, but those memories, you know, they are forever. Forever, they, absolutely. Remember all those stories. So I think, and uh, teaching, because uh, you know, our last uh, semester, the Chennai Business School, we had to have it online, and that was also beautiful. I mean, thankfully there is some. Called the net and you know Zoom and other platforms. Yeah. There are even breakout rooms, so you know you can give an action. Everything is possible. That I am attending workshops. I am, I'm, you know, uh, learning so much, and you know, little little things which you had otherwise taken for granted. That, Absolutely. You know, simple things like thank God you have a phone. Thank God you have a good Wi-Fi connection. Thank God you have. Oh yeah. Uh, locations, locations within your home where you can actually put your, you know, uh, oh, no. uh, camera or your phone, because all that was just a gift. Where did we even think of a, a scenario like this? Yeah, so very, very gratifying. Right. Uh, maybe at this point, I can ask you a question that somebody from the audience has asked about: What made you choose storytelling as your passion? Okay, so I've always been labeled as uh, the drama queen of the house, and uh, my father was a great storyteller. And uh, I think I naturally uh, went on to that path because I love those reactions. You know, I still remember Papa would ask me to mouth the dialogue. You know, which he saw me practicing in front of a mirror, and he would say, "Come perform this in front of so many people." And that's where I, I completely had no inhibition. I used to just and. I used to say, "Oh, Baba," and encourage me so much that it never felt like acting. This was a part of me which went on, yeah. you know, school annual day or the colony annual day. So when 
I uh, started uh, doing essaying roles on, you know, uh, street and doing a little bit of theatre. Somewhere, I think that storyteller dream of mine, you know, working with children went, uh, it was kept aside. But then yeah. one day I saw uh, Gita Ramanujam performing in my office. I said, this is what I want to be, finally. So that's yeah. when I... That's the, fuck, yeah. yeah you know, that was a catalyst and then I revived it because I was doing weekend classes with hippocampus and good books yeah. And yeah to take that as a you know as an art form you know yeah as an art form it took me some time yeah. of course, yeah. uh, last year when I you know uh, quit my corporate job and then uh, it came full because I mean everybody is a storyteller but so to carve a niche for yourself you need to keep working you need to figure out what else can you put into the story that you know and stay true to the story as yeah. well yeah that's what I love storytelling and it, it it's so satisfying i can't tell you how much it's like after a kacheri you know i i, I guess that's how or after a dance performance that's how uh, the artist feels so feels very, right very yeah very, i mean uh, it's definitely is. fabulous to to kind of um, <laughs> Do the work that you love, right? So, absolutely, and all, that all itself all. is a privilege. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, just one big shout out to Panjavarnam, uh, Janki and Dhwani. Like, what about Panjavarnam? Do you really like? I mean, you've been through there. I mean, you guys have been old customers of theirs. Just a little something. Vijay is also listening. Just a little something about what you think kind of sets the brand apart, or what you like about it. Space and obviously Vijay auntie and that kind of translates into what you're building and your entire experience in Panjavarnam uh, and also the uh, Vijay auntie always gives you an amazing moral if you go to Panjavarnam. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, we called it the Panjavarnam moral at, at home. Oh yeah, yeah, I've had that. Yeah. Yes, but no, I think uh, you know on a serious note, um, it's a very warm space. You know, Vijay auntie yeah. is listening to you. She's like, okay, this is what you want. I remember when um, I finally got the blue linen sari that I now have. I think we must have gone through at least 150 saris in that course. Before you, okay. Vijayati was so patient through it and she was like, and then she's like, oh, you know what, I think I know what you will like. And then she just picked this blue one out and I said, auntie, how did you know? So yeah, it's, it's I think Vijayati and yeah. And, yeah. And, and the way, you know, the moment you go there, see, there's a, a lot of respect to that sari that Vijayati. So what happens is, you know, you can't but not give this. It's, it's like, it's not like you can see all the things displayed. So you first, she allows you to go, um, uh, yeah, it, no, go deep into your mind and figure out exactly what, a, what you're looking at. See, half the time when you go into the store, you think of something and then you see something and then when you come back and you say, but this is not what I wanted. For yeah. the place. So here, because, you know, uh, she keeps bringing in those saris, she'll say, all right. Uh, I love the way she'll say, okay, first you see this. So, you know, you, we'll, we'll put it all together and she'll say, yeah. okay, yeah, no problem. It's taken aside and then, so it makes you, and then I'll say, no, can you bring that other one, that white Loretta? Right and she'll say, and see, once she knows you, she will show you only the ones that you will like. She'll say, okay, I'll show nice. you think you like it see that takes a lot of listening to you and your uh, you know what you yeah. like that is something that Viji in uh, Panjavarnam really um, we, we just love shopping there because I think um, that space you know lends itself to that yeah form. yeah um, I mean I, I just want to add that for me when I talk about the sari you use the word respect and that resonated with me because um, somehow like unlike any other outfit like, I don't know if I respect my pair of jeans. I have a very different kind of relationship with my <laughs> You know what I mean? But somehow with the sari, it just sort of demands, commands um, a certain sense of respect. And even, uh, even the wearer commands a certain sense of respect from those who are looking. And somehow, you, you just, it doesn't have a sloppy kind of personality that almost forces people around you to kind of sit up and take notice. And I think that um, um, this... That's that's really what in the company of the sari is, right? It kind of fosters these um, intangible values of respect, um, 
love, a sense of dignity, <laughs> a sense of poise, elegance, grace, all of this. Um, thank you, Janaki and Dwani, for kickstarting this series. Um, I'm sure Viji has uh, many interesting people lined up, uh, but I'm so glad that, um, you know, they kickstarted the series with both of you. And I had the opportunity to be in conversation with two women uh, who are both my friends in different capacities and who I both deeply admire and um, uh, I'm, I'm like always like uh, Dwani's um, Instagram page and almost like stalking her for all her food, uh, blogs and stuff. And I just want to remind both of you very, very gently that at different points, you both have in, made promises to invite me home for um, coffee and for a meal, Dwani. And I just want to remind you that once the lockdown is over, we must definitely make plans. And I want to thank Viji and for even creating a space like Panjavarnam for creating the brand and then having a space like that uh, and of course you Akila who I admire so much because you've been doing so many good things during this lockdown it's not Thank easy you. <laughs> you all know how much of uh, you know how much of uh, what pushing, goes on behind the scenes yeah uh, pushing ourselves you know we know that we don't have help and so much I mean you know um, in a family but you know get out of that bed and say no today I am going to do this Thank you. <laughs> listening to yourself and say, hey, I want to do that. So thank you, uh, Akila. And Akila, I, I, add, uh, when I first met you, I hadn't ever thought of fitness like by, by a long way. Yeah, so there was yes. part of my you know negative relationship with my body. The minute I met you and your dedication to just wake up and run, I don't know if you still run as much anymore in lockdown, but like your, I just love the way you set time aside for all the multiple things that you do. And then Thank you. Everything you are absolutely inspirational. Thank you so much for thinking of us. Thank you so much. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Uh, please stay safe, stock up on groceries, um, and do keep tuning in. I think Viji has like a bunch of other people that she wants to be talking to. I'm not sure I'm going to be talking to all of them, but do tune into the series and um, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you to everyone who listened. Um, and good night. Yeah, bye bye. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Bye. Bye.